Hey guys, so I have made a reading vlog in a little while and I'm like really excited to film this one I actually filmed a lot of reading vlogs over the summer. I just haven't uploaded them yet or edited them I gotta do that but because it is officially October and it is spooky month, I decided I would do a spooky like fall thriller reading vlog. I love thrillers and I have these four thrillers at school with me. So I thought it'd be fun to see how many of them I can get through in a week. I don't really know anything about these books because three of them are book of the month books. So I like barely know anything about them. I don't even know that much about this one either, but we're gonna get through this week together. The books I have here at school, like I have more books at home, but the thrillers I brought with me, this one is The Family Game by Catherine Stedman. This is actually my book of the month pick for this month. It was what I got for October and it just came in a couple days ago. I haven't started it yet, but I think this is one I'm going to read first. The next one I have is Killers of a Certain Age. This one I think was my September pick for book of the month. Then I have The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley, which I got like a while ago from book of the month. I see I have this problem where I always get my book of the month and then I don't read them. We're going to get through some in this video. Then the last book I have here is They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman. This one I just like had on my TBR for a while. I got it a while ago at Barnes and Noble. I'm hoping we'll be able to get through a couple this week. I don't actually know how many we'll really get through because I do have school, but I don't have school tomorrow. It's Tuesday today. Oh my god, it's Tuesday, so I don't even have a full week. I have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Six days to read four books. Anyways, like I said, I'm going to be starting with The Family Game by Katherine Sedman. So I'm just going to read the synopsis for you guys. It says, the rules. One, listen carefully. Two, do your research. Three, trust no one. Four, run for your life. Harriet Reed, a novelist on the brink of literary stardom, is newly engaged to Edward Holbeck, the heir of a powerful family. And though Edward has long tried to sever ties with them, news of the couple's imminent marital bliss has the Holbecks inching back into their lives. As Harriet is drawn into their lavish world, the family seems perfectly welcoming. So when Edward's father, Robert, hands Harriet a tape of a book he's been working on, she is eager to listen. But as she presses play, it's clear that this isn't just a novel. It's a confession. A confession to a grisly crime, a murder, murder and suddenly the game is in motion. Feeling isolated and confused, Harriet must work out if this is part of a plan to test her loyalty or something far darker. What is it that Robert sees in her? Why give her the power to destroy everything? This might be a game to the Holbeck family, but for Harriet, losing might prove deadly. That sounds good. It is 319 pages. I hope that the chapters are short. It does not seem to be that way. I'm actually going to start reading this right now. 10.30. You can't even see it, but trust me. Let's see how far I can get in. Guys, I literally got two sentences in and had to stop because it says upstate New York. If this book takes place in upstate New York. All I read is the prologue, but this next chapter is literally called Fairy Tale of New York. I'm praying it's New York City and not upstate. That's scary. I feel like that would scare me. Trouble. 16 days and I'll be leaving. But in seven or eight, I'll be. So I just read one chapter of this and the writing is kind of hard to like get into. It's not like just easy like flow. Like I'm always going to compare to Colleen Hoover. Like I just read her book so fast, but this one's kind of like I need to reread some stuff. I'm like, wait, what did she just say? Maybe I'm just not paying attention. We'll see where it goes from here. Today is Thursday. It is seven o'clock and I have nothing left to do today besides read this book. I'm on page 56. I'm really enjoying it so far. I did figure out that their house isn't upstate New York so that's scary. I know in the beginning I was like I don't really like her writing style but like now I do. I think maybe I was just tired when I started reading. I am getting into the book now. I don't know I really am enjoying the main character. I love when the main character of a book is an author or like a publisher or something like that. This main character her name is Harriet so actually like she goes by Harry but she's an author. Yeah she's an author and I just love that already about the book. She's meeting her fiance's family. They're all like these rich people. Like they always push away the fiance's girlfriend. So she's like super nervous. And I feel like there are a lot of books that like have that trope in it, but like, I'm really enjoying this one. It's giving me like inheritance games vibes because like everyone else is like rich and proper except for her. We're gonna see how far I can get tonight. I really want to finish it, but that's like huge aspirations. Dreaming. Hit the road and I hit it so fast. 
fast My body moves on But my mind stays back Sixteen days and I'm still so I just got to page 79, which is chapter 10. A couple things. For Edward's dad, Robert, I'm imagining President Snow. I don't know why, but like, if you've seen The Hunger Games, you know, the guy that plays President Snow. That's what I'm imagining in my head. Let me know if you imagined him like that, if you read this book. Also, I wanted to mention that so far the story is taking place on Thanksgiving Day. So that is literally giving me the best fall vibes. Like, it hasn't really gotten to like the super like thriller part of the book yet. It's like still building, but it's Thanksgiving Day. Even though it's a thriller, I'm still getting that warm, cozy fall feeling, and I'm loving it. I'm really curious to see where this is going. Ah. I, like, don't want to say what's happening because I wanted this vlog to be spoiler-free, but, like, there's something weird here. I think at the end of this vlog, I'm gonna have a spoiler section. So I'm not gonna say what's going on, but something is giving me the ick. I'm literally in the middle of a chapter and I just had to tell you. I'm on page 84. Uh, if you wanna see what I'm talking about, watch the spoiler section at the end. Hey guys. Okay, so I came home for the weekend. I'm here with Eris. I don't know if you can see her. I literally came home because I missed Eris. I'm gonna try and get a lot into this book. Give me something to believe in I'm at page 180-ish, and I literally have no idea where this book is going. Like, I literally, I just don't know where it's going. I'm really liking it. I just have absolutely no guesses. Usually at this point, I have some inkling what could happen. I just absolutely have no idea. This is not a spoiler, so don't worry, but she went to this family event and played this game, and it was so fucking weird. Every single thing so far in this book is just, like, weird. Like, I'm very curious to see where it goes from here. Let's keep reading. It's the next day. I still haven't finished this book, but I have less than 50 pages left. I've been reading it all day. I'm going to finish it right now. I like it a lot. I'm loving the story. It's just like there's 50 pages left and now I'm getting to like the intense part. Like I kind of wish it was like m the intense part longer. Like I haven't read it yet. So maybe it's like has to be short, but like I only have 50 pages left and now I'm getting to the exciting part. All right. I finally finished this book. I have many thoughts. I feel like this is a common problem with readers, but like if I'm gonna rate the book right now, I know I'm gonna rate it higher than like I think. No, I'm gonna, I think it's three stars. Like three and a half maybe. I really enjoyed it, but I also just really enjoy thrillers, period. Just the family dynamic is very strange. I didn't like the ending. Obviously, there was like a plot twist. I didn't like the plot twist. Did it kind of catch me off guard like a little, but like kind of the whole time I was like, it's probably this guy. Like, I don't want it to be this guy, but it's probably this guy. And then it was. That was really disappointing. It was predictable, but like, she could have done so much more with what was going on. I did still like the book. Don't get me wrong. That's why I'm giving it three and a half stars. I'm going to update my Goodreads. I'm going to do some homework and then I'm going to start a new book. I just need a little bit of time to process this. It is later and I'm ready to start a new book. So I brought home with me, I have The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley, which is another book of the month book. The other one I have is They Wish They Were Up by Jessica Goodman. This has been on my TBR for so long. Before I decide which one to read, I'm gonna check a couple things. First of all, let's see if either one has short chapters. It looks like the Paris apartment has really short chapters. This one doesn't really have short chapters. Now I'm going to just look them up on Goodreads to see which one has a higher rating. The Paris apartment has 3.69. They Wish They Were Us has 3.50. So by a little bit, the Paris apartment has a better rating. So I think I'm gonna read the Paris apartment then just because it has short chapters and it has a better rating. Let's do it, let's just do it. I forgot to say that I low-key don't remember what this book is about. Let me read the back for you, actually. Jess needs a fresh start. She's broken alone, and she's just left her job under less than ideal circumstances. Her half-brother, Ben, didn't sound thrilled when she asked if she could crash with him for a bit, but he didn't say no, and surely everything will look better from Paris. Only when she shows up to find a very nice apartment, could Ben really have afforded this? He's not there. The longer Ben stays missing, the more Jess starts to dig into her brother's situation, and the more questions she has. Ben's name neighbors are an eclectic bunch and not particularly friendly. Jess may have come to Paris to escape her past, but it's starting to look like it's Ben's future that's in doubt. Everyone's a neighbor, everyone's a suspect, and everyone knows something they're not telling. It's 
the next day. I just got to page 100 of the Paris apartment. I don't know if I'm just like tired, but even though it's like interesting, I'm not that into it. I'm very much a mood reader and like before I even started this video, I was like, I low-key want to read a romance, but like I love thrillers. So I was like, well, I want to film this video. Might as well do it. I don't know. I feel like I haven't really been into these last two books and I don't know if that's the books entirely or like I'm just not in the mood to read them right now. I'm liking this book, but it's not giving me a five star star feeling. I think I'm gonna go to Starbucks and hopefully I'll wake up a little more. I think I showed you guys me getting my coffee earlier, but I literally ended up leaving after that, like to come to school. I'm on page 106. I'm trying to get to halfway. So I've got like 70 pages through tonight. I think I can do it if I start literally right now. I just read a mini little plot twist that I did not see coming, so I really like that. I like that I did not predict that. I'm hooked even more now. So far, I'm really liking this book. I love that the chapters are like two pages, three pages, keeping me hooked. And there are a lot of characters, but like not so many where I'm like confused. Like I said, I had a little plot twist that I wasn't expecting, and I'm on page 162. So like, I still have more than half the book left. So like, I'm glad that there was a plot twist already. Guys, I'm on page 276, and oh my god i think like i just realized something something is just like revealed but not like explicitly said i'm like shook that that is what is happening i'm not saying like spoilers so if you want to see like what this part is watch the spoilers part at the end but holy crap i was not expecting that coming so i just finished this the paris apartment so many twists and turns i did not see coming definitely didn't see that ending coming there was also a lot of weird things going on like just parts of the book that didn't need to be there to get to the final goal so i'm giving it three and a half stars I enjoyed reading it, but was it my favorite thriller? No. And now after this reading vlog, I'm going to go read some romance books. Forcing myself to read two for this vlog has been hard. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't want to see the spoilers, click off now. If you want to watch the spoilers part, that's going to start right now. Okay, I'm on page 84. And what the fuck is going on? This girl is like so attracted to her father-in-law. She's literally about to have sex with her husband and she's like, I'm thinking of his dad. Ew! And she's like, my pregnancy hormones. Like, no! At no point will I be thinking of my boyfriend's dad during sex. Absolutely not. I literally hate that. I hate that as part of this book right now. It's literally the same thing I was saying before, but Harriet is still, like, attracted to the father-in-law. Are you kidding? There was literally a line in this last chapter I read that, like, she said, I let my mouth find his warm and wet as the distinctions between father and son blur once more. Ugh. That aspect of the book I am hating, and there better be an explanation for it by the end. Spoilers for the Paris apartment. I don't like Nick. I do not believe his story at all. I think he is definitely the bad guy. Maybe that's because of how I've had other books end up in the past. You know, sometimes the good guy ends up being the bad guy and that is how I'm feeling with this. Like, I just feel like Nick had something to do with Ben disappearing. I don't trust him. Page 276, bro. I just read. So I think what happened is that Mimi is the granddaughter of the concierge because the concierge said that her granddaughter was born 19 years ago and she's like i've worked here so i could see her grow up and mimi's adopted and they have no idea who the mom is so that makes sense like they didn't explicitly say it but like that's what i think it's all intertwined it's so weird how like all these characters are intertwined okay and also benjamin daniels is fucking fucking everyone just fucking everyone he has this thing with mimi or mimi is like obsessed with him he's sleeping with her mom he got a blowjob from her son like it just is just it's just crazy like he's getting around this family bruh i just recorded that last clip and page 280 mimi is walking around ben's apartment she broke in waiting for him instead of lingerie when they've never barely even spoken and it says better even than that were the short hairs i found around the sink where he'd shaved and hadn't managed to wash them all away i collected several on a finger i swallowed them Ew, what the fuck are you reading? <laughs> She's like going through his clothes and just like smelling them and eating his hair. This woman is crazy. Spoilers for the Paris apartment because I just finished. I totally didn't see that ending coming. I did not expect Ben to be alive, the dad to be dead. I did not guess that thing about the dad at all. That caught me so off guard. And then, okay, Loki, I just did not like Ben's character. Like the fact that he kissed 
Mimi and then was sleeping with her mom and then gave a blowjob to the son. Like he was just getting with way too many members of this family. So overall, I give this book three and a half stars, but it was definitely weird. Let me know your com your thoughts on both of these books in the comments because I'm dying to see what you guys think about it. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Tearing up tickets from the rock and roll show. Want to remember, want to forget. Wanna run away, don't wanna take a hit